Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to being here. I'm Ariel. And I'm Shia. Wow, what a day we're having so far. It is. You know, I did something funny today. What did you do? I read on my iPhone our horoscopes. Oh. And I, I just thought it was funny. It was talking about putting out fires today mm -hmm. and about handling emergency situations. In the middle of the night. We've been living an in an emergency, emergency situation. situation. Uh, uh, a storm went through a couple of days ago and it knocked out power for this area. And we're still without power, except, well, we have solar, which we drain the batteries completely because we had our air conditioning on. We didn't we were charging we'd lost the power. car. So we didn't realize we'd lost power because the uh, it was seamless when the power went out, the batteries from the solar kicked in. Until and, we used them. And then when they were completely gone. Our uh, emergency generator kicked in. Until last night, it ran out of oil. Well, then when, up, at, when the oil gets low, it shuts itself off. It's so, a safety measure to, to keep from burning up the engine. A little after midnight, so, so I woke up and said, it's off. He went out and checked, and he drove out and got oil, oil replacement in the middle of the night. <laughs> at 12 o'clock at midnight? Yes. And we went and poured it in, and it was all fixed. Right. And but so now the reason we're able to be doing this podcast is because our generator is generating sufficient electricity for the house. But yesterday we had no power. We had no Internet. We had no phone and no cell phone service. Everything went out. So we made plans to go to a local hotel. When we got it sorted out enough, the Internet came back. We had a stable uh, source. We're doing it from our office. But it was really about stepping into each thing as if it was our idea. So don't know what's happening in your life. Perhaps you have no emergency situations. That's great. But you can listen today to absorb the possibilities so that when things show up the way you don't prefer your or don't able, expect, you're able to meet them. That's right. Now, Ariel and I finish each other's sentences, so I'm not technically interrupting her. <laughs> you're not even untechnically interrupting me. But in any event, you know, like we we tend to augment each that other. That is so true. Let's take our first <laughs> guest, yes, shall yes, we? Yes, yes, yes. We have three today, so it's going to be fun. Naz. Welcome to uh, being here. Tell people where you're Zooming in from. Hello, Erin and Shire. My name is Naz. I'm Zooming in from Farringdon in Oxfordshire in the UK, and it's just an hour and a half west of London. Oh, thank you for giving an us hour a... and a half west of London. A visual. Now, if I knew where London <laughs> was on a map, I'd have an idea of where you are. But so... <laughs> Don't. Even though we've been there, often. even though we've been there a few times, right? I, I don't have a visual. <laughs> no, That's in the southeast of the UK. Okay, okay, okay. southeast. I have a feeling, Naz, that a number of our listeners recognize your voice. <laughs> you do the announcements in the middle of uh, the uh, podcast. And we love your voice, but more than your voice, we love you. Oh, thank you. And not only do I love doing the podcast, I love you and I love this podcast. I, you know, it's 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 such a joy to listen to the podcast at the start of my day. Um, you know, and I like to listen to it when I'm going, you know, driving to work. And it it really for me brings me to the moment whether I'm waking up upset or not upset it's listening which I find really supports me in going about my day um, and it's such an honor to be a guest as well because I get so much from listening to you and the people who are your guests they are really inspiring and it's just lovely to be here and you know yeah just be part of this 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 show this community 
Mm. Nice. Now, luckily, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows, so or podcasts, depending on how far back you go, because it was an internet radio show in the early days. But we have all of that archived podcast, so you can listen every day going to work uh, for a couple of years. years without having a repeat. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's um, it's re- I loved hearing about your story about the your experience with the generator and things showing up unexpectedly. Um, it was really funny. A couple, yeah, a few days ago. Um, I woke up, I it was it was really late, um about nine o'clock-ish in the evening, and um we have somebody leaving at work. Um and we 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 get very caught up in our own to-do lists. And I realized in that moment that, oh, has anybody organized a leaving present or anything? And I, I I texted members of the team and, you know, everybody else had got caught up in our busyness and getting somewhere. And over, over WhatsApp, we were able to organize something. Um, and it was really sweet because in that moment, I had that moment of, oh, panic. And then I, yeah, I was like, well, I can either panic or I can either just get something organized. And so well, this- you can look and see what needs to be done and do it. Sure. Using your eyes, a a great tool to discover what's needed and wanted in your life. If you look, you'll see what needs washing, cleaning, vacuuming. Yeah, the other thing is uh, what you're describing. In this case, it was some sort of leaving acknowledgement for your colleagues so that they would feel appreciated and taken care of. And it it came to you as an idea. Other people either didn't have the idea at all, they forgot or they passed it off. And I think sometimes when we have ideas like that, we're like, well, why doesn't someone else do it? Because it's yours. And when you step into something that matters to you rather than, I'm not saying don't delegate because sometimes I have ideas and I delegate it. I, I say to people, what do you think about this? Anybody want to do it? But I'm clear if somebody else doesn't want to do it, I can take it on. I love what you said about it should be somebody else's idea because I had that fleeting thought. It just, you know, instantly, you know, this isn't my job. <laughs> I like that it was fleeting. But what is your job? You know, it's funny how we separate our lives, we segment our lives, uh, like this is my job and this isn't my job. What if everything that shows up needing to be done in your life is your job? And you do it like it's what you're supposed to be doing, rather than be the victim of the circumstances that you have to do it. You know, I love the quote from uh, Invictus by William Ernest Hemley, who who said, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Well, you are when you take it on like it's your idea. And you're not when you become the victim of it, as if somebody else should do this. And you're on the shoals of life. You craft your vessel. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 as you say, it was, it was great. I could have gone down that victim route of, oh, I got to do this. And, but as I said, the thought was fleeting. It's got to, it's get to. And that is a manipulation of words. It's not, yeah, not so But as it was really, truly something that you wanted for that person. Well, look, you know, I wash the dishes. Every morning after breakfast, I cook breakfast, I wash the dishes. He washed them from our smoothie today. I will wash them from our smoothie today. But I wash the dishes as though it's my idea, not just to get them clean, but to be there for the process and watching how my hands work with a sponge on, you know, and when I put soap, how much soap to put on. All of it is part of 
my experience of living in that moment rather than getting it over with to get on to the important things because you know there are no important things and everything you do is important it's one of those little dichotomies in life <laughs> or, or paradoxes that's a paradox yeah for sure and i had fun getting to organize not only gifts but us as a team and it, it it was fun um and it was really really cool and um yeah it's it's um that the leaving um meeting celebration was really sweet um yeah so I think i'm sweet and fun i'm gonna make a segue how about we call in our next guest to to join you and join us and uh, we just continue this conversation. What do you I say? I like that idea. Sure. All right, Janet, welcome to being here. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Excited to be here. Nice. Nice. So how are you doing at being the captain of your soul today? Well, it's funny you should say that because that is the third time today that I've heard that quote. So I heard it, I read it someplace right before our meeting. And then you said it earlier, Shia, and now you repeated it, Ariel. So I would say not so well, because it keeps coming up for me. Well, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, not sure I'm following the through line of what you just said. That it keeps coming up doesn't mean that you're not the captain of your soul. I believe you read it on the uh, description. I mean, you may have read it somewhere else, but you read it on the description of the podcast today for sure, because I know you read that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 my experience of you is that you're lost in the loop of being hard on yourself. And when you get hard on yourself, uh, Janet, your ability to see, your ability to navigate your life gets truncated. truncated or less. It gets difficult. It's like you're suddenly in stormy seas well, rather well, than sailing. Not only sailing. that, it, it, it limits your vision. You know, like you become monocular, like you're looking through a tube down a, you know, a dark tunnel and the light at the other end seems to be what you have to get to rather than slow down enough to realize that there's a world around you other than that tunnel vision. You know, it's like looking at life through a telephoto lens. Ha have you ever taken a pair of binoculars and turned them around the wrong way and looked through them? No. Well, everything gets very, very far away. And tiny. And tiny. tiny. And tiny. <laughs> yeah. See, and when you're looking through uh, telephoto lens, it foreshortens everything. It takes out the three dimensionality of your life, and it it gives you a long distance view of something, but there's no depth of field. It's very two dimensional, and that's what upsets produce where you have an idea of what you need to accomplish at the other end to, to get through this, rather than be where you are and discover you in that moment. See, it's when you're upset, it's all about getting out of the upset. Have you noticed that? Yes, very much so. And it creates so much... But, but anything you resist, my dear, persists. So if you're trying to get out of something, you're, you get deeper stuck in it. It's like quicksand, you know? The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. But if you relax and allow yourself to be there, you can actually lie down and float yourself right out of that quicksand. I've done it. No, it wasn't too long ago, and... You know, maybe you have something to add to this, Naz. Uh, that Naz wrote an email to a number of people or a WhatsApp or a text. I don't really recall what the medium was. All I know is that she noticed her upset and then unapologetically laid it out for people. I have this situation in my life and I've been upset about it. 
And it allowed people to support her, not help her, but but it diffuses the burden. And also uh, uh, what happened for you in the writing, the details are not particularly important as in the writing of the email or in the response from people, I'm saying email, say WhatsApp, what happened for you? Do you know, I had such a sense of relief to be honestly sharing exactly how I was in the moment and not trying to cushion it. Um, and being heard by someone else. You know, mm -hmm. the act of listening is not just about hearing what somebody has to say, but about really getting their experience in your listening. And then it relieves them of the burden of what they're struggling with. Yeah, and I felt this shift it's just to have- Sweetheart, there's something else. And that is the idea that your life is unfolding perfectly in this moment. See, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Now that does not coincide with your thoughts. Your thoughts are, I should be well, happy, and much better than I feel right now. But if you don't feel well, if you feel upset, that's where you're supposed to be in this moment. It's not, you're not, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be happy when you're sad. You're supposed to be sad when you're sad. If you allow yourself to be sad when you're sad, well, happiness can show up. But if you're resisting being sad or upset, you stay in that state because what you resist persists and grows stronger. That's the first principle of not rule, but idea of instantaneous transformation. If you see where you are and allow yourself to be there, it completes itself in the moment. And that's the third principle. Anything you see without judging and allow it to be exactly as it is, completes itself in an instant. And the second principle is very simple. Life shows up exactly as it does, and you can only be exactly as you are in any given moment. Well, if you're miserable in this moment, that's the only way you can be. So you might as well enjoy your misery. How's that? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Janet? Well, I mean, it's, it's so spot on because it's like, yes, I feel miserable. But then on top of it, I'm giving myself a hard time for feeling miserable. And it just, I you think know, you it the energy it creates. Uh, I, I think you have it in reverse. You're giving yourself a hard time, which leads to feeling miserable, which you give yourself a hard time for. But you wouldn't be miserable it. in the first place if you weren't giving yourself a hard time. I'll give you an example. So last night when Shia realized that the generator had gone out, he's like, Ariel, the generator died. But I was in such a deep sleep. I'm like, the general died? Which general? Who? I thought he was talking, she he was talking about a person. And I was so disoriented. He's like, I have to go. I figured it out. We need oil. And uh I'm gonna go get it. And I I I thought, oh, I should go with him. And I was like, can you go on your own? And he said, yes. I was shaky. I had, I was just. She was very deeply asleep. So what happened though, was when he got back, I was enough awake that I could, you know, go help with the doing of it. But he said, while I was out, it was a really creature. And I, I'm like, really? What happened? He said, I saw two foxes, a coyote, and about a half dozen deer. I was like a coyote. I've always wanted to see a coyote. And I didn't go out. And I was like, that was my choice. It was an appropriate choice. And I'm so happy you got to see a coyote. But I had the moment where I could be hard on myself for the choice I made. 
in that moment. And, and the, that would have led to misery. You can only have made the choices you've made up until this moment. How's that? See, you couldn't have done anything in your life ever differently than you did. I had to break up with Geraldine Parmese in 1963 because I did. <laughs> How's that? That was a really good choice. It was. Yeah. <laughs> in any event, it, it's actually, I thought it was more her choice than mine. I wanted sex. She wanted the theater. Yeah. I think you made a good choice. I did. I, I did. did. In any event, uh, you can't have done your life differently than you have. Everything that you've done, you did with the best intentions. Well, good choice, bad choice, I don't know. It's, it's a it choice runs. already made. It's done. What's done, you can't do anything about. So feeling bad about what's already gone by is just like, Ariel and I once went to this uh, fishing uh, um, camp uh, in Pennsylvania and had a little bridge over the river and you could see the fish from the bridge. And, uh, you know, they say water under the bridge, once it's gone by, that water's gone. Life keeps flowing. And what's happened in your past had to have happened the way it did because it did. So why not enjoy this moment of your life and let all that other stuff go by that you re re regret or resent that you think should have been different. None of it should have been different. It all led to this moment. Congratulations. That's the transformational approach in change, which is how we've been taught and how we learned. You take a situation and you judge it as good or bad, right or wrong, better or worse. And then you make fortunate, declarations for the future about how you're going to be different. In this moment, you could only have been being hard on yourself because you were. And here we are in a new moment. And I love your smile, even though people can't see it because we don't have the video function. We're not releasing this as a video. Yeah, I mean, I do sometimes remind myself of this, that I have a choice in the matter. It's a new moment. I don't have to like dwell in the well, past. It's just unless so you're dwelling. Unless you are already dwelling. You see, if you think you ought to have done anything differently, said it differently, then you're not here. You're in a past moment trying to correct what's uncorrectable, what nothing can be done about. You know, I'm in a rehab program for an injury to my Achilles tendon and then also the ligaments around it. And, uh, I keep working it to fatigue. It's and in a way you say, I keep reminding myself, Shia and I have done things with upsets in the past where we have purposefully said, oh, rehashing this, looking at this in and out is just going to continue to have us be upset. Let's just hit the restart button. And when you hit the restart button, you it, you purposefully let go of that whole thought process, which will recur. And then you divert yourself into what's around you, either visually, what you're investing in, what you're listening to, what you're doing. The activity. And like rehab, I'm getting stronger and stronger in that leg. You get stronger and stronger in your ability to let go of being upset. It's instantaneous and it is cumulative. Just reminding yourself you shouldn't have to is all part and parcel of the conversation of being upset. Just yeah, no, that, thank you for that. You're welcome for that. Thank you both for being here today. And Naz, so sweet of you to uh, share your time with Janet and lovely, uh, I know you all as listeners can't see our guests, but on this particular segment, Naz has just been 
reveling in enjoying Janet, which is a possibility, Janet, that people can enjoy you and do enjoy you however you are. Now, the, the real challenge is to allow yourself to enjoy you. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. And thank you, Naz, for letting me share this time with you. Oh, it's so sweet, really. Um, I've really enjoyed it and just enjoy this whole segment with you, Janet, with you, Aaron and Shire. It's just such a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. It's that time. The time for what? Our listener feedback spotlight. What is that? Well, I'm so proud of the people who listen to this show. And now we get to hear from one or more of them to, about? about what's happening in their lives with transformation by listening to this podcast and what or, they've discovered about life, what they've mm-hmm. discovered about their lives, that they are experiencing fun in their lives. And that they want to share it with you. Yeah. This is Leah in New Jersey, and I love the Being Here podcast. I listen to it on my commutes. I listen to it while I'm washing dishes. And in between attending uh, the Living Made Easy seminars, the Zoom seminars and weekend seminars, it's such a great resource for just bringing me back to the current moment. And I am feel like it allows me to experience my life rather than get lost in my thoughts. And uh, just the other day, playing with my daughter, I was jumping and bouncing around like a 17 month old, which is how old she is. And I just never thought that that level of enthusiasm was possible. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. We have several Living Made Easy two-hour virtual seminars coming up. And I want to give people a heads up that we normally do the first Tuesday of the month as a Living Made Easy in the evening for our European and UK community. This month coming up, it'll be on Monday because it's a holiday here. Uh, So for Labor Day in the U.S., it'll be Monday in the afternoon, U.S. time, 1.30 to 3.30, and it'll be 7.30 to 9.30 in the uh, European time zone, and an hour earlier than that in the U.K. time zone. It's going to be Monday, September 2nd. You're invited. Our weekend seminar is coming up. We have a virtual one, transformational Time and project management. That's September 28th and 29th. Just a month from now. So, you know, get your time and project management in order. It's going to be awesome. Then we have an in-person seminar in Hamburg, Germany. We have a few there. We have on Thursday, October 31st. The Freedom to Breathe. And then on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. November 1st through 3rd, we have the art of being happy. That's what we're offering next. Uh, so if you'd like to being come. Being happy is actually an art. It is an art. It's an art to avoid the pitfalls that we've been so programmed to fall into about complaint about our lives rather than enjoy this moment of our lives. You know, it's interesting. We've been using uh, the I I captain is the title of this and being the master of my fate and the captain of your soul. I remember when we used to go out on our boat in Raritan Bay 
and it would be really smooth, mm -hmm. except for there was one shoal by a lighthouse in the middle mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a boat that capsized there in the news because they didn't recognize that even though uh, it was smooth sailing, if they didn't recognize what was underwater, you could have a big apparently rogue wave come and knock you over mm. or the time somebody went over the the entrance to our area where we docked our boat because they didn't see the submerged oh, jetty oh, oh, and right, they ripped right, out right. the I bottom remember, of their boat i remember that i think that's one of a lot of us do is we are not aware and we create our own pitfalls and before you know it you're sunk okay so <laughs> there is an art to being happy i by the way either of those weekend courses will fulfill your prerequisite if you should choose to join us for a week or two in costa rica in january of 2025 That's and quick right. shout out to uh, my friend rosanna uh she's listening to the podcast now i hope you're really enjoying them and for all of you who've been sharing it to friends, I, I'm fairly certain that I had told Rosanna some time ago, maybe even more than once, that I, Shai and I do a podcast. However, I said it in a way, or she was receptive to hearing it, or the time was right. You know, it's okay to share with people more than once because people truly are interested. Well, people truly are interested in what they're engaged in, and they rarely, if ever, hear what you're saying from your point of view, because they are busy with their thoughts. You know, when the telephone rings, you're usually busy with something when that phone rings. Yeah, Shai said something to me the other day, and then I was <laughs> like, oh, I realized, I said, uh-huh, and I actually wasn't listening. And, you know, I'm a professional listener, and from time to time, I space out, too. Let's take our next guest, shall we? Yes. Christina, welcome to being here. Tell people where you're Zooming in from. Hi, this is Christina, and I'm Zooming in from Bonn, Germany, which is in the very west of Germany. When you come to Hamburg, because I know you come to the courts, how, how, long, how far away of a commute is that? Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, like... It's like a four-hour train ride. Hmm. So you have Hamburg in the very north and then Bonn in the very west. Gotcha. Thank mm. you. Yeah. I'm having you doing geography yes, today. It's fun. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm so enjoying listening um, to, to um, everything just, just being said here. And I so realized that my mind is so speedy today. And um, I love what you just said. Ariel, about um, I, I think I think I, I take so many things as an interruption because I have such a strong agenda going somewhere. I just realized just listening to you guys, a such a strong mechanic about how structures are and rules. I mean, I'm German. I love rules, and I just realized that. <laughs> You say you're German and you love rules. I don't agree with you. I okay. guess you're German and you follow the rules usually, but you don't necessarily love them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe comfortable having them because they give you something they give to you resist. <laughs> they give you structure, you see. You can either resist or agree with it, but it, it creates a structure that you can not have to think in. You can just say, well, I, I, I have to wait for the light to change before I can walk. Mm. And they do that in Germany. New York City, it doesn't work that way. It's the light turns suggestion. red and people walk anyway. Mm. It means pay more attention that you don't get hit. <laughs> or mm. fast to get across before the cars come. You said something that didn't resonate to me as actually accurate. Okay. You said, my mind is so um, speedy today. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's true. I believe she's speedy all the time. I believe you're aware of the speediness of your thoughts today, rather than this is a uniquely speedy day. Ah. 
So you're so so what Ariel's saying is you're speedy all the time and you became aware of it today as though it's new or and, different. And as though it's a problem rather than wow, look at this. You get a lot done when you're speedy. Mm-hmm. There may be some positive aspects to being speedy. Mm. For the most part, though, it's it's uh, slowing down will pull you into the moment rather than running away from the moment. And if you get in the moment, life becomes very mm, supportive. I also think you've provided us an opportunity to circle back around to the conversation we were having with Janet, because the Mm -hmm. idea, because you said, oh, I'm speedy today, you put your hands on your head. And it's like, how we treat ourselves as if we are a problem. I don't see other people seeing us that way. And uh, we tend to be so much harder on ourselves than other people are. Yes. Um, so, See, and, and you take for granted your magnificence. Oh, that's nothing. You don't, you don't even think about that. But that minute I was late is something that's, that's to work so important, on. Right. So true. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I have so many moments as an example for this lately because um, I'm leaving my current job to start a new one in August. In August, sorry. <laughs> and um, so it's a lot of saying goodbyes, and it's it's spreading out because there's so many people. I um, yeah, I want to say goodbye, but at the same time, I feel this <gasps> better not say goodbye because yeah. Well. One thing is this particular episode, we're recording it early, will air at the end of August. And I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to hearing back from you after you listen to it, because so much will have happened for you. And of course, even if you're starting an exciting new job, change can be upsetting. And you're far better change. off. Is, is upsetting. upsetting. It's not a can be, it's an always is. When your life shifts and changes happen, it's an upsetting moment. Our cat's been really funny because with this power outage, mm-hmm. what I didn't realize, we have certain things like our office runs on the generator. And I didn't realize where we had our cat fountain plugged into is not one of the outlets that are covered by the uh, auxiliary the power auxiliary power so we had to move things up so she was creeping up on that cat fountain that wasn't running water like it was something foreign that might bite her and then we had oh. to move to an area where we could plug it in and it would uh, get provide her fresh water and now then. she's looking at it like what the heck is this <laughs> this could eat me Hmm. <laughs> cool. you know, it's what if that's hard wired in there and you are here as a survival structure because any change is notable and then you can step into what you want to do to say genuine goodbyes have this job be the best it's ever been right up to the end so that when you leave you're launching into whatever's new and you're coming at it full bore like it's your idea rather than oh i'm glad i'm over with that as a winner as opposed to you know we moved to this house we uh had lived uh in upstate new york for a number of years and we'd made that home we had there that we were renting excuse me, a burped, we made that home ours. And then we we took everything out of it, got it in the U-Haul, cleaned the place, and we looked around. We were like, wow, we made this place great. It wasn't inherently great. We made it great. We invested ourselves in it. We also left it better than we found it. Found it. 
and it was time to move. Hmm. Well, I can yes. be that way with your job. Hmm. That's a good reminder. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, because when you get upset, you need reminders. You forget. You forget yes. how amazing you are. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I so brushed this away because uh, people are, they're giving me such lovely um, responses when I say goodbye. Um, even the mother, when I told her, look, I'm a special needs assistant, so I'm going to say goodbye to the kid. I assisted for over half and a half year, one year and six months. And she started crying. And I was like, mm, I didn't sign up for this. Mm, what do I do? And which is a really nice response because it just shows that she really, yeah, is really thankful for me taking care of her, her kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing too, when you listen to people's gratitude toward you, you give them a gift. We think, oh, yes. God, I don't want to hear this. But really, it's listening to their gratitude has them feel well. Listen yes. has them feel well. Hearing what they say from their point of view. Yeah, listening to them. complaints, listening to listening, period. <laughs> listening is a gift. Listening full stop. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Thank you. And Thank you. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, if you, as a listener, want to hear from us, sign up for our newsletter. It's amazing. We have blogs, we have videos, uh, and they're beautiful. They go out with, with the inspirational moments. Ah, so next week, you ready for next week's episode? Yes, I am. Urgent. Is not frantic. frantic. <laughs> we'll be back. So come on back. Yeah, next week, right? Right. And don't miss being, being here. here.